first time working the University Complutense of Madrid as a, as a teacher. And I'm also a specialist in preventive and community dentistry there. And the mixture of both specialities, my contact with the blood and the prevention has led me to uh, study more about this aspect. And now we are all concerned about this crisis with the coronavirus. And we have to have everything clear for avoiding the cross infection in our clinics because we have to go back to work in several weeks or days, and depends on the, on the state. So I have made this preparation. I apologize. I want to help you with your organization of your clinic for the time to, that you have to go back to your work. I have based all this information in the FDI or the ADA, the World Health Organization, uh, the European Center for Disease Control, and all the information available in PubMed, uh, all the lectures and and above all, my government of Spain, which has uh, given some lines for work. So um, COVID-19 is, as everybody knows, an infection caused by a new coronavirus, which appeared in China, in the uh, Wuhan, the uh, region of China, in December of uh, 2019. It soon spread to the rest of the world. And on March 11th, the World Health Organization declared it as a pandemic. COVID-19, um, the hypothesis is that the bat is a reservoir and uh, it arrived to a host, which is the pangolin and the people who eat it uh, uh, caused the infection. And it caused a respiratory infection with symptoms such as fever, malaise, cough, microthrombotic events, alterations in, um, uh, in the smell and taste, and in some patients can trigger pneumonia and even cause death. There's a first stage with an initial infection with a high viral load with, of 37 or up. In the temperature, uh, it causes dry cough, diarrhea, headache, and maybe maybe there are a lot of people with this asymptomatic. So um, the infection can be a, a, an, an, a, a, this uh, without any notice. The stage two makes a pulmonary phase with a breathing difficulty or hypoxia and a third stage with an inflammatory phase with acute uh, respiratory syndrome, shock, or hair, head failure. Uh, the transmission route, everybody is uh, hearing news and uh, reading uh, lectures. One person can infect an average of three people by the moment. Uh, it makes respiratory microdorpels, and the cough can reach up to three meters and can contaminate vomitus. Another way is with a direct contact with mucous membranes and droplets when talking, aerosol in suspension. For Probably they are studying that the fecal oral transmission is possible with vomitus too, with the hands and the puncture. How long is coronavirus detectable on surface? There are studies about the air can be standing on the aerosol up to three hours. And this is important for our uh, environment. Uh, on Cooper, during four hours, cardboard to uh, 24 hours, stainless steel for two, three years, plastic during three, year, three days. Um, it has an incubation a period of an average of five to six years. Six, six days, sorry, a range of two between two and 14 days, but the media is five, six days. The incubation uh, longer than 27 days has been maybe due to a double exposure. A recent study has reported that the 
12.6% of the case reports are indicated as a presymptomatic transmission. It has got a fatality rate of a 5%. It's very high. It's higher than the sensual flu, which the fatality rate is uh, less than 1%. Um, it increases considerably with the age, and um, uh, there are differences between the, the males and females, and especially up to 65 year uh, old is a uh, higher, higher the fatality rate. As a prognosis, we know that the 82% of the cases can involve a mild of a moderated form, not very severe. The 15% can develop a severe form and the 5% can become critical. What is the risk for us, for the health workers? It depends on the country. In China, they show 3.8% uh, of those infected health workers. In mid-April has uh, been shown that in Spain, the health workers were infected in a 14.3. Uh, uh, two days ago, they say that it's raised up to a uh, 20% and in Italy a 10%. So um, we have to be careful. Uh, the problem in Spain are the protective equipments. Um, I have read some news uh, that we are like heroes in Spain, a little bit. <laughs> So we have to decrease this posture, and by the moment we are in a, an alert a, a state. So we can't work a, now. I'm in my house. I, I don't know if you have seen my son <laughs> behind. He's now here. Um, Abel Baja. And he'll father not ties. answer machines messages websites and in, in several weeks we are going to go back to work um, we have to know that there are many asymptomatic patients um, the principle of universality is very important because of uh, we don't know if our patient who haven't got didn't have fever in the past days or contact with a person with coronavirus, but maybe they are transporting the 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 the, the, the illness. Which emergencies are now? Uh, by the ADA, which emergencies can we do until the uh, alarm state can be eliminated? By the moment, we can only attend emergencies like potentially life-treatening emergencies and controlled breathing, abscesses with cellulitis, trauma can come, which can compromise the airway. Um, of course, this kind of emergencies will be treated in hospitals, but we're going to be in front of dental emergencies, priority one, which are acute pain from a pulpal inflammation, pericoronaritis, dry elderlies, and tooth fractures, tooth fractures, <laughs> a lot of tooth fractures I have seen because of we are, people is very nervous of this situation. And this has been mainly the single emergency I have, I have seen. By the other hand, there are another not urgent, but just significant for the patients, which are priority two. And we have to manage if we have to go or not, because of, for example, it can be an extensive caries, which is uh, near, the, near the pulp, uh, such a removal, of course, it may be a prosthetic ulcer, which can cause a very a lot of discomfort to a patient, especially an elderly person who can't uh, eat properly. Maybe a temporary feeling fault and trauma for orthodontics too, which can make an ulcer or persist persistent bleeding after 24 hours after an extraction. So 
we are not going to treat non-emergencies like the normal treatments in the clinics. Checkups, parental treatment can be avoided in this time. So if we have to go to an emergency or what I'm going to tell is for the future, for we're going to start working in several weeks, uh, we have to extend all the preventive measures so as to avoid the uh, cross infection between the patients and from the patients to us because of we are very near, we are very exposed and we have to protect ourselves as much as possible. So what we are going to do when we return our activity after closer, first of all, we have to make sure the staff is healthy. We have to check out uh, which are their condition, if they have had contact with someone of the family with the, with the coronavirus uh, infection, if they have had fever, all, all the um, battery of questions. Um, if possible, if we have available test, uh, we have to make the test uh, we have already made. I am negative. And, and if possible, to have a test so as to know if they have the, the infection, if they have passed, or if they are with an active infection. We have to give them a very detailed information about the new measures to be adopted. Uh, in my clinic, we have always been very, very strict with the preventive measures, but nowadays it's going to be more improved for everyone, even for the receptionist. Um, I have provided them some courses, for example, the ones I'm, I'm given for Stroman, for Euronda, and I'm going to meet them uh, before starting with a simulation of a patient who comes to a clinic. What we, we, do we have to do with him? Uh, which questions do we have to make? So. Um, we can't start until until we have a pre physical presence of all the resources that we're going to, to need. For example, the um, protective personal equipment, hydroalcoholic solutions, eh, everything as light for protecting the reception. And it's very important to make sure everyone has understood everything. Um, for the patient, what do we have to do? First of all, we have to make a tr telephone triage. Uh, we have a battery of questions I can provide it. Um, I can provide it to you. Uh, I, after the presentation, I got my, my email. You can make me the questions you want. Um, we have to ask uh, the typical questions about if they have a uh, hat fever, contact with any one of the family or a friend who has coronavirus, if they have headache, a loss of the taste of, or anosmia, um, a, the type of a medical condition. And by the moment, I real emergency or not. In fact, I haven't gone a lot of times to my clinic because of really the people is being very responsible and the people is still in their house and the emergencies I have treated, they were real emergencies. And if I do this triage with the cellular, it's important to have uh, uh, any encryption for the um, private data. Uh, when we have decided the patient has to come or when we start and he's going to have a
some shoe covers on the hydrocolic uh, solution. Um, the person has to come alone. It's very important to avoid to have a lot of people in the clinic, above all in the waiting room. So if possible, he has or she has to come alone. Only in cases when uh, coming with the kids, for example, or with an elderly people who has who needs some help, it will be will come with with someone. But normally the person has to come alone, and the the objective is not to wait in the waiting room. As soon as the people arrive, can go. Of, uh, if we make the person to wait, he's not going to come on time next time. So we have to um, adapt our uh, timetable so as to not to make the people wait in the waiting room. Uh, it's important to tell him that call before entering to the dental practice, for example, if a person has a date at 11, for example, when he's uh, on the near the clinic, has to phone, uh, I'm here, or send a message, for example, and he has to, he or she has to wait in his car or. you can enter directly to the cabinet. Uh, when the person comes to the clinic, it's important not to wander around the, the, the dental office, um, only to stay in the waiting room if it has to be there or uh, go directly to, to, to the cabinet. We're going to offer him an hydroalcoholic solution, glove and mask, and if the person arrives with his own mask, better for avoiding our spent of money. And it's important to offer them some credit card payment so as to avoid uh, touching the, the, the notes or the coins or whatever. There are some directions for the reception too. As soon as the patient arrives, we will offer him some hydroalcoholic solution on arrival. We have to make sure his temperature is okay, is under 37 degrees uh, with a distance thermometer. Uh, it has to be a distance of 3.5 meters from the patient to our staff but we are going to I have already in my clinic I have installed a metropolis like screen so as to avoid the contact with the flow of the patient when he's talking but in more addition to this uh, our staff has to wear masks He has to know that we are going to offer him an special contact consent uh, informed uh, so as to with the with the information about the this problem especially for the covid what we are going to do with the waiting room and the common areas first of all we have to remove all the magazines the tv remote the coffee make makers i've got for example in my waiting room i have a place for the kids i have took out all the toys i had there so as to avoid the manipulation of things and the formites i have took out all the magazines and it's uh, everything uh, clean uh, another Uh, we have to make sure, first of all, try to avoid the uh, concentration of patients, of course, 
but if they have to be uh, to have a la at last two meters. Uh, it's better to have furniture um, in plastic to clean it properly, but in my case, I have, this is my waiting room, and I have the problem of the of the of the chairs and and the sofa, and I'm going to clean it with vapor uh, between the patients. But uh, it's important to make sure to have it cleaned, or uh, even we can use plastic to cover it between the patients. Um, another thing that we have to do is to have the windows. I, I have the lucky that I have got a window in every every cabinet in the waiting room. Uh, I've got uh, win windows all in my clinic, but normally there is a lot of people who has clinics without this uh, lucky without um, without uh, windows. So we have to manage something with the ambience. To avoid this uh, suspension of the micro droplet in the air, we have studied that they can be still during two hours. So this is one of the importance for avoiding the people in the waiting room for a lot of time. Uh, uh, we have to make a continuous cleaning. Uh, if we, you don't have someone a, a, all the time, Someone of the clinic has to do it in this time. The the not the receptionist, but someone has to has to have a um, clear that the toilet and the waiting room has to be cleaned uh, at least once and once an hour. Uh, on the toilet, we have to provide responsible towels and a soap dispenser so as to avoid the manipulation of all the things and continuous cleaning. And we're going to plane. We've got to plane the, the, the treatment. And if possible, the, trend, the treatment has to be made by a dentist who has had the illness. Not my case. <laughs> I'm not going. <laughs> I have to protect myself uh, a lot because of fine negative. Uh, we have to plan the treatment to avoid repeat appointments. Uh, first of all, is to avoid the repetition of the of the visits to the patients. We have to try to do as much as possible. Uh, we have to talk with the patient. It's better to be more time in the clinic, but only once, if possible. Uh, if, if possible, we have to have an isolation box. And it's very, very important to have a minimum furniture and equipment. The workshop has to be cleaned and empty because of, you know, that all the formatives can be, can be contaminated with the aerosols. Um, if possible, away from the waiting rooms and other uh, offices or surgery room, if possible. Maybe you have uh, one only one cabinet. So in this case, you are going to have more more space between the patients. We're going to try to work with the air conditioning off, but if we uh, install some devices in the air conditioning, we can to work with it. Um, if possible, we can have a negative pressure systems or open the windows in my case. Uh, the examinations must, must be took uh, behind closed doors. When the patient comes into the, into the room, we close the door and, and we manage the patient. What are we going to do with the with the environment? Environment. This is a question very repeat. I have uh, already prepared this this conference. Uh, this is more with a lot of additions. Um, there are a lot of devices. People is getting crazy uh, buying different methods, 
And by the moment, we don't know, we have to know that this is a very, very new uh, disease. We have very little in, uh, information uh, about this stuff uh, in PubMed, for example. The literature is very scarce. So we have to take care of which is going, what is going to be our inversion because of maybe we're going to invert a lot of money in something which is not uh, effective. Mm? There are nebulizers, ozone. First of all, I'm going to talk about the nebulizers. There are uh, different concentrations, products, time of exposures. But you have to know that uh, not everyone is affected with the coronavirus. And we have to know that uh, there are uh, appear in a lot of products which can be corrosive, not only for our health, but also for all, all the machines that we have inside the cabinet, for example, the, the, the chair or whatever. Um, it's very important too to disinfect the matching room, very important. As the same important is to have uh, uh, inf disinfected the, 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 the clinic room where we are, but the matching room is very important to have it very clean and uh, windy if possible, like in my case. Uh, different products like hypochlorite is effective is one of the bioseed uh, accepted products for coronavirus. It makes oxidation of the um, of the of the virus, but also make uh, oxidation to our environment. Um, uh, another, which is uh, a lot of, which has uh, a lot of publicity now, is the hypochloric acid. It has uh, appeared in this moment because of they are talking about uh, the safeness for us. It's effective in surfaces. Maybe you can use an nebulizer so as to clean the surface. Probably it's effective in nebulizer, but we have more. We need we need more studies so as to confirm it. By the moment, we don't have the certain that it's going to be effective. Uh, we have to know that we can enter the room within two, three, four minutes after nebulizing. We we'll know if it's the concentration is okay. Probably it can provoke corrosions with the deposit of the crystals over the surfaces. We have to know it. We have we need further information. And safe, uh, they are saying that it's safe. It's it's produced by our own cellar uh, cells, but the same. Further information are needed. The alcohol is, is one of the biases um, accepted by the EFA uh, in a and or in, in wipes so as to clean. The hydrogen peroxide has, has been accepted for the coronavirus is environmental respectuous and can be used uh, when you are working because of it's very safe and can be added to another method. The ammonium quaternaries has been improved that they are accepted to and they are respectuous to our machines. Um, and a lot of people is asking me uh, about ozone. Uh, we, are, we have depth about if it's effective or not with COVID. We need further information too. But we have to know that it's irritant. In Spain, I don't know if in your country, even in residents, uh, these uh, devices, because of they are not very expensive 
and they are using it without any contrast. So we have to know that it's uh, risky for our health. Uh, it's not recommended by the moment by the EPA for disinfectant for COVID Qbyte. We have to know that uh, this the, the room has been has got to be uh, closed for, so as to reach the con the proper concentration. It has to be at two point five parts per um, uh, for, to be effective. Um, and uh, we have to wind the the room after entering because of the our health. There are devices for the air conditioning. Or we fill filters so as to a filter the the environment to avoid the cross infection. But the uh, summer is arriving, and we have to have a solution for this. There are many devices, for example, the catalytic energy uh, energy energy sorry is a, a like a filter um, which uh, with the um, humidity of the air conditioning can produce uh, oxygen peroxide. It has a ninety percent elimination of the use the ozone so be careful with our risk you travel it inside the tubes um, is another solution, but we need more information because of the speed of the wind. We don't know if it's going to be to be effective or not. Another solution, not with the air conditioning, but we have to know the for the, uh, the forced destruction of the air in the room. We have to know that it's noisy and I can't imagine an evening, a whole evening with the ultrasounds uh, and hearing another, another, I'm going to be deaf <laughs> in the future. The ultraviolets, the ultraviolets are, a, um, there exist so, a, several kinds of ultraviolets. We have to know the if a has a photochemical process, not redness, and it can be active by the titanium oxy, uh, oxide. The D can make the pigmentations. Uh, it has medical applications and is the responsible of the vitamin D. But we are going to use the uh, w, uh, UC, which is germicide and is made artificially. And there is this tube of uh, mercury or lead uh, lamps, which can generate this uh, kind of The ultraviolets are being used for water disinfection, surface disinfection. There are lamps for the uh, there are studies in in Germany uh, for surface disinfection. But we have to know that if there is a shadow, it's not effective. Um, and you know that uh, it can cause us some skin damage. So uh, it it has to be to be using uh, in the absence of people inside. 
Another, the air disinfection, as I have told, and there exist some portable units or wall units which can filter the air so as to eliminate the germans. So, what is the most effective way of um, protecting us is the barrier. First of all, when we arrive to the clinic, you have to have our, our nails good, short, and avoid the nail polish. I, please, I, have, I am always talking about this in my, in my conference before coronavirus, but now it's very important to avoid uh, these uh, recovecs. Uh, this is more uh, spaces uh, to take to our uh, house. Deck. It can be reservoirs. We have to remove all the watches, jewelries, because of they are re uh, reservoirs. In a previous diapositive, I have told that um, the virus can uh, stay during four hours over a, a copper, for example. So it's a reservoir which we can take to our house. We are always talking about the hand hygiene. I'm always talking about the hand hygiene. Uh, before coronavirus, people thought that the gloves were uh, the single solution, but it's mandatory to be always cleaning our hands um, before examining it or treating. When First, when you arrive to the clinic, as soon as you arrive, you clean your hands and, and before examining it or treating a patient, after touching a patient, if we have touched something contaminated, of course, if we touch the you have videos in internet how to do it images the world health organization has got images that you can print and put in the in the toilet not only for us but also for the patients and after cleaning during this time uh, it's better to disinfect with an hydroalcoholic solution for far another further uh, 20 seconds our protective equipment in Spain, we have a royal decree to uh, this decree. Uh, we have a, a normative in Europe, and um, the surgical gloves or masks are health products which can uh, be under the royal decree and uh, all the lo uh, European lo uh, lo laws, which feathers can ha do they have to have whenever possible to be responsible <clears throat> to protect with a minimal disturbance i'm going to talk about this and easy to put and to put it correctly i'm going to talk about the basic uh, protective equipment i have to introduce my uh, this is mar she is my my personal hero now uh, she's my um, a, a anesthesia a anesthesiologist in my clinic she comes to help me with the surgeries anesthesiating my patients but now she's on the first line in a hospital of Madrid. She and Carlos, which is my other uh, anesthesiologist. And uh, this is the basic protective equipment. She comes, now she's coming to an EU, uh, intensive care uh, with coronavirus with this uh, um, equipment. It's important to use a disposable cap or a, if not um, a textile cap. We have to use a visor or a very tiny glasses. I, I'm, I'm fan of the, of the face mask 
because of it protects me much more than than glazes. I, before coronavirus, I was always talking about uh, the importance of covering. There are a lot of uh, masks. Uh, we are better use the FPP2 is okay for us. And we have to try to avoid the exhalation valves because of we are protected, but when we exhale the air, we're going to contaminate the patient. So this is the, for us, this is the most, Mm, reliable equipment that we can use. This is the different mask. The surgical mask can be used over the PPF2. All the patients should wear surgical mask to prevent the spread of the virus inside the, the dental clinic. If, if they arrive with it, it's okay, but if not, we have to provide him one until the moment we take out the mask so as to work. Or max with um, with belts or without them, the P F um, the mask can be excel uh, the viruses. The surgical mask has to follow these directions, and we have the surgical mask to discard every uh, patient. These are the surgical masks, the filter the air will expel, but they don't prevent us from inhaling the virus. We are going to make aerosols in our dental practice, and it's important to be as much protected as possible. The FPP1 has a 78% uh, of minimum filtration efficacy and 22% external leak leakage. The FPP2 there exists with bulbs or without is preferably to use uh, without bulbs. They filter viruses paid, uh, in a uh, 92%, but we exhale the 8% to the outside. Uh, it prevents us from the inhalation of fumes or particles because of it adapts very good to our face. And um, they exist, as you know, with or without valve, but we prefer to use without valve. It's recommended for the coronavirus patients who has uh, without aerosols, but we can use it because if we are going to put a surgical mask disposable over it that we are going to use and take out when, when we use. There is the FPP3. It has uh, more filtration. They filter films, toxics, but maybe it's too much. And the N95 is from the US regulation. In Europe, we can use it because of the leakage of the leak of the of the other kind of mask. Uh, and it has a 90%, uh, 90 95% of uh, filtration has a good fit and a minimum leakage. It's a good option too. The shell filtering mask, uh, which follows this. Um, can be reduced. Uh, there has exist some uh, direction so as to sterilize if necessary only if necessary they should only be re sterilized in accordance of the manifest manufacturer's instructions we have to know that there are a lot of kind of surgical masks and everyone is made with a different material mm, there are studies for example from the 3m or uh, there are 
uh, we have to follow the direction of the manufacturer because of uh, we can provide uh, uh, the same structure after an sterilization, but maybe it can provoke um, healthy damage because of the products of the resultation of the heating or something. So they are made only for one use, but if necessary, mm, we can sterilize but only with the manufacturers. Is it safety? We don't know. We don't know. It's not normal to disinfect this because of we have never had to do it. But in this situation, as you know, I have told that in Spain there are a lot of health workers contaminated, 20%. Uh, and it's better to have it than being infected. Which clothing we are going to use? This is my companion of my class in my clinic. Um, uh, the clothing follows simple lines. Uh, it has to be able to be washed in a high temperature. Every day I have to change it so as to <coughs> avoid uh, being contaminated when using it the next day. It's impossible, it's, it's mandatory to not to mix it at home with the household linen. If possible, have a washing machine in the dental office. Okay, so as to avoid the clothing go to your house or the nurse houses. It's important to not to take outdoors. I am always telling it, but uh, with this situation, is more important. The gowns, which one are we going to use? It's, uh, it's, it's important to be disposable and waterproof. They have to follow this uh, law, the 14128. There are uh, different types of arnesses full partial body, as much part of our body uh, will cover is better and as much uh, waterproof is better. The caps should be disposable. Uh, the clocks uh, uh, we are going to use under the shoe covers. There exist uh, some clocks which uh, arrive until the which are more protective for us if we aren't going to use a whole gown. Uh, we have to talk, to talk about the gloves. Uh, people before this coronavirus, now we, I think we, everyone has clear that the hand cleaning is very important, but I have, when I talk about the asepsy in my courses, one of the typical questions was why to wash the hands if we are going to use gloves? Well, gloves has a little, very little, but they are permeable. This is an um, uh, elect, uh, electric, uh, uh, this is an electronic scanning microscopy of a glove. This is an study comparing different um, different kind of loaves and the permeability is different between the different loaves. So it's very important not only to clean the hands, but also to change it every, every uh, with a periodicity. For example, the, the latex or the neutral globes must be changed every 15, 30 minutes, more or less, because of the permeability. Uh, the vinyl, every 15 minutes, I don't use it anymore. I have problems with, my, with the latex, with my hands. I started to use the vinyl, but uh, it's better to, to avoid them. And there exist latex or neoprene surgical gloves, which you know, they are thicker and they have three layers and you can use it for one up to three hours. Uh, you have to use two pairs of gloves as soon as you arrive to the clinic and you put your uh, personal equipment uh, protective 
to put the gloves and these are going to be your second skin and over it when we are with the pa with the patient we put another one um when um it's, it's going to be this is going to be very important to us to avoid the cross infection and after eliminating over again clean hands uh, for the for the staff which is cleaning the instrumentation it's important to use special thick gloves for handling the instruments for example latex or um, this kind of, of gloves and under using latex or nitrile gloves underneath. For the A protections, there is a direction. The this is this this uh, um, law talks about the impact protection the um, uh, against the liquids. Uh, coarse dust, uh, but they are not talking about microbiological protections. Uh, it's important to have as much as possible of, of face covered. And um, there's not a specific standard against protection. Before, before this problem, I have seen a lot of people working without glasses. Uh, in my specialty, I'm periodontologist. I'm always with the ultrasounds and blood, and the hygienists are the higher uh, collectivity who use the glazes. But I'm used to see companions which are made in aesthetic, for example, or fillings, or which doesn't use um, usually the, gla the glazes. It's very important to use it. This is a study uh, previous. Um, this is um, lentils. And it's at a annual lentil. Uh, it, people used a uh, made and scaling and root planning and this is the cultivation of feet and this is what happens okay? so this is an open wound which has to be very protective this is a study it, it, it was they were studying different kind of protective equi equipment uh, the surgeon made uh, surgery in a, in a in a cadaver, which was uh, injected with a fluoridic um, with a fluor fluorid uh, solution. And after they made a photograph with the ultraviolet light, and as you can see. This is the different parts of the body um, which are not covered and they are, as you see, they are spreaded with the splatter. Even using uh, a mask, have you seen that uh, it, can, it can pass through now? This is my, my other hero, Carlos, <laughs> who works with me. And they are in the in the intensive care of a, 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 an hospital of Madrid. Overloaded, they are still overloaded uh, because of this is a hospital with a lot of elderly people. But uh, this is the level A uh, personal equipment, protective equipment. It's important to use a disposable cap, a FPP3 mask, a work uniform, a full suite, double layer of floats, shoe covers, and a full mask. Uh, in my opinion, we are going to be using aerosols. We have to protect as much as possible. And there's a study which says that this kind of full suites uh, are very protective, but uh, they are difficult to put on and to put off. So um, it's important to balance this 
because of there is a study that says that only using a, um, a impermeable a gown is enough for avoiding the cross infection. The study was made with virus like Ebola. And, and maybe it's not necessary to use this kind of, of, of gown or of, of suits. The order of clothing is to put on the clothes and shoes, wash the hands and disinfect, put the disposable cup, the mask, the neutral gloves, the gown and the glazes, and a second pair of gloves. This is the study I was talking about. It's of Berbeck. It's, it has a, um, it's in Cochrane, a, a systematic review. And it says that if there's not evidence that more covering this kind of suites uh, leads to more protection, but the breathable types of personal equipment may lead to a similar contamination, but they may have a greater user satisfaction. And the full suites are more difficult to retire, so uh, it can provoke a cross infection in the moment of the taking off. So we have to balance everything. So we are trying to avoid aerosols. What we are going to do when the patient is on the, on the, on the chair? First, we are going to offer him a rinse with a 1% of hydrogen peroxide, which has been demonstrated that is effective with coronavirus, so as to avoid the, or the viral charge in the, in the mouth. Because we are going to make an aerosol, with, mix it with the splatter of the saliva, and the saliva, there are studies which can be a reservoir of the of the coronavirus. Another another rinse can be made with povidone iodine, of a, in this proportion, a 0.2 percent. Uh, I prefer hydro hydrogen peroxide so as to avoid people who is allergic, for example, to povidone, to, to, to iodine, or um, the continuous contact with the iodine is not good for or um, chemos. If possible, we are going to use extra oral x-rays, if possible. That's why when you use intraoral, um, we're going to manage a lot of inside the, the mouth. It can make a vomitous um, response to the patient and it can explain more aerosols. So if possible, use extraoral x-rays. If possible, we're going to try to use uh, manual instruments. I'm going to try to avoid the ultrasounds, if possible. Um, we're going to try to, to work for handed uh, with my assistant, so as to avoid touching everything. Um, if possible, we, ca we have to use a dental dam because of uh, this is the best isolation way when we are using the aerosols, for example. With the dental uh, dam, we are avoiding the mixer with the um, explatter of the, of the saliva. Uh, if we are going to use the rotatory um, instruments, uh, use them with an anti-return system because of they prevent the uh, retroaspiration and the contamination. And of course, it's mandatory the whole sterilization. One question, very repeat. Mm, rotatory, no, we have to invert in rotatories. In, we have to make an inversion in, for example, in um, orthodontic um, devices because of we have to sterilize everything. We have to avoid water strangers too and to use as much as disposable instrument as perfect. 
uh, to avoid the aerosols, uh, we can do something. For example, the aeros the, the uh, surgeries or the things that we are going to do with aerosols to put it the last of the evening, for example, uh, or use a surgical suction or device, for example, this one which has been appeared or um, cones or the devices which can absorb the aerosols near the mouth of the patient. Try to use observable structures so as to avoid the person to come again to take it, them out and cover as possible with disposable material as much as possible. For example, um, try to cover the rotatories the same that we do for a surgery, try to do it for a normal actuation. These are covers for the, for the chair, fields over the, um, over the uh, furniture, as much as material can be disposable, this covers for the aspiration or for the rotatories, everything we can cover is better because of after is just films for example for the the things that we are going to use the lamp or the 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 buttons of the chairs for example eh, cover as much as possible or cover the the place where the the patient is going to put their hand it's important to make sure that the impressions, if we have to take an impression, has to be very good disinfected before going out from the dental office. The, the prosthetic has to arrive the impression disinfected. The best way for doing it is by an immersion way with hypochlorite is the, the the cheapest way but there exist some products but we have to make sure that they are effective for coronavirus you have if you have any product okay. Uh, of all the products uh, that can be used for disinfecting not only the surfaces but also for everything against coronavirus. If we are going to manage a prosthesis, for example, imagine it appears uh, an elderly person with a heart, with an ulcer, first we can the acrylic into bleach on the uh, 1%, or if we are going to use ceramic elements or metals uh, in alcohol of the seven in the seventy percent, um, and which disinfectants we are going to use? We are going to use. can be used. We can use uh, hypochlorite, uh, per uh, oxygen peroxide, uh, quaternary ammonium compounds, and this is, this is, you can copy, because of this is the whole list of the products that can be used for the disinfect the surfaces um, in coronavirus crisis. All the disposable material has been disposed in an appropriate con contain, for example, the puncture material. And the disposable material, the gowns, the gloves, eh, can be used in a with a pedal bin with a hard cover. We put it and we have to close it into a double sealed bag so as to avoid the cross-infection of the staff which is managing the, the truss on the street. For cleaning uh, after, after uh, the surgery or whatever we do, we have to remove the films uh, to take it into the trash, as I have said, with the pedal. We have to make a surface disinfection 
with uh, hypochlorite. We know that it can make corrosion, but it's accepted for coronavirus or with hydrogen peroxide or between the 72 and 71 ethanol. Uh, we, for example, with the wipes, we have to clean the spittum with a, a maybe with hypochlorite or with an appropriate a product for the spittum. Very important to clean the suction, take out the cover of the suction, uh, frequently uh, clean the handles, the knots, uh, and it's important to air the room for 10 minutes before patients with the door closed. We close the door and we open the, the window. If we are doing the, uh, surgery, we can keep the window open so as to avoid the, um, the aerosols stay over us. After finishing, we are going to, cl to clean the dental chair with the wipes. It always is important to do it from the cleaner place to the more, the more dirty, not the dirty from the clean. Uh, not to take it and after we take the material the instruments and we have it's in, very important to sterilize it perfectly there are several stages the collection the, the contamination we have to follow everything to do it uh, appropriately we have to have an sterilization room if possible which has to be in, uh, signalized and we have to divide it into several places. I have changed, I have put it into colors because of the clean, the, the, the material will arrive to a cleaning and disinfection area. After it goes to a packaging area, which is still infected. And after it goes to a sterilization area. Every time the person who is going to be inside this room has to be with the a protective equipment and when I have shown before the cleaning of the room I, I forgot to tell that uh, there is, has to be they has to be still with the protective equipment as soon as we finish with the um, with the patient the assistant will take out one of the clothes and, and we are going to clean everything everything and she takes everything to the sterilization room. The person who, the staff who is in the sterilization room has to wear a protective equipment too uh, with an um, impermeable uh, cover and the gloves, the, um, the mask, the glazes, the cap, everything. There are two ways of doing this. The manual way, which is uh, uh, cheaper if you don't have any machine. First, you have to do a decontamination of the material after a cleaning, a rinsing, a uh, drying very, very carefully. And there's two ways for doing it mechanically. First is the ultra ultrasound, uh, minimal it's minimum to have in a dental office an ultrasound so as to clean properly and to avoid the manipulation of the instruments uh, which can be um, now we are talking about the coronavirus crisis but uh, before when i was talking about a sepsis uh, uh, the most part of the accidents with the puncture aren't in front of the patient. The most uh, habitual accidents with a cross infection is behind, it's in the sterilization room. That's why uh, all the measures that we can do so as to avoid uh, these problems uh, is very important because we are managing puncturing um, instruments and, and maybe we don't know which patient belongs. So, if we, if possible, we have minimum an ultrasound. 
uh, and there you do the cleaning after we have to rinse and to hand dry. But the best thing to do is with is with a thermo disinfector. Determine you finish from your dental office with the material and you take it into the thermo disinfector, and it alone cleans, dries, and disinfect with a temperature so as to only to take it out and to seal it to package for the sterilization. When we finish, uh, we have to make a pre-wash this contamination so as to if we have to touch it as much as this contaminated if possible. We have to dilute the disinfectant, immerse it before cleaning in an ultrasound tray, which is, is less risk, less aerosol, less time. Uh, for we have we can put it inside and we can do another thing while and um, it's the it's a better uh, cleaning quality there are studies i have studies uh, of comparison of different um endodontic slimes and um, this is the best way for cleaning uh, followed by the by the thermo disinfector uh, that water temperature is very important too because of um, if we use a, a material a, a disinfectant, we ha it's important to know which is the concentration and the time. And we know that if it has a higher temperature, for example, uh, it can need only less time or more or more time. It's very important to clean the material very clean because of the bio burden is important. It's indispensable because of it uh, eliminates the bacterial load, it removes organic and inorganic dirt, it prevents salt from corrosion of the instruments. And after that, after the cleaning, it's important to dry it with something which doesn't eliminate, in, eliminate fevers. And be careful because of uh, it's disinfect, but not sterilize it. And after we are going to package it with a seal. Uh, it's important not to fill a lot the package uh, to let a um, minimum three centimeters from the top of the instrument until the sealing line. And when we could, we have to let uh, one centimeter more so as to um, make us easier to open the package. And after we have everything packed, not filled a lot, only one third of the package, we go to the sterilization. Uh, and this is the thing, uh, an object is considered sterile when the sterility, sterility assurance level is lower than the 10, uh, one, less than one between one million, the probability of finding a microorganism. Uh, this is the standard the UN, uh, of this directive. It's important not to fill the autoclave a lot, only one third, not touch the, 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 the cap. It's important to uh, not to not to put a, a lot of material one over it, let the spaces between the package so as to make circulate the, the vapor. And after the sterilization, we have to validate it with the validation methods. We have the chemical validation on the, on the package, but there are another things that we can do. For example, I always use the uh, Elix text, for example, so as to know if my autoclave is uh, functioning perfectly inside the turbines, for example, the rotatories or the, um, the for example, the, the, the bow, the bow dick, for example, is for the textiles. And um, we have to make sure 
that we are making the sterilization properly uh, to avoid the cross infection uh, and to cut uh, the problem if as soon as possible. The traceability is very important to do it with the autoclave. The, the B autoclaves has a program which can be stored in our computer so as to know if it's everything okay with the package. And traceability is very important. So as to trackability, if a problem has been with a patient, to make sure that we have done everything okay. And after the cleaning, we have to go from the cleanest to the dirtiest. It's important not to sweep materials on the cleaning areas, to have two equipment for cleaning, the, the dirt area and another one for the, the waiting room, for example. Um, don't forget to clean everything, everything, the knobs, the bathroom, hand rest, uh, the bathrooms, uh, every hour uh, is important to clean, every hour to clean the, 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 the floor. And of course, after the dental practice at last of the day, it's important to be very meticulous. In the reception, don't forget to clean the keyboard, the mouse, the phone, um, the clinical area, the same of the case, the equipment, and the sterilization area. Don't forget to clean all the equipment, the switches, Everything we touch is susceptible to be um, transporting the infection. And after all, we are going to get undressed. We take out our gloves, the, out, the outer uh, gloves. We take out our gown, our protective glasses, our mask, the cap. And it's important to wash the hands perfectly with first uh, with the soap uh, and after with the hydroalcoholic and when we go home uh, it's important not to touch anything as soon as we arrive we take out our shoes we take out everything over a box uh, our cellular has been disinfected uh, the keys everything uh, on the near the door um, and have a shower as soon as we arrive because we have been very protected but now it's important to clean even our hair and use the dishwasher at high temperature and clean all the surface uh, for example the briefcase the handbag and everything before uh, putting it away and it's important to be responsibly responsible of course, don't open your clinic again before having everything prepared, all your protective equipment. Uh, avoid the, our patients to go out from their house uh, a lot of times, uh, above all in this moment, which are everyone at home. Um, I want to say thank you for you, for your attention. Excuse me again for my English. This is my email. I always respond everyone as soon as possible. Uh, you can follow me in Instagram because of, uh, for example, this evening I'm going to answer uh, some questions for another enterprise or you can follow me. You can send me all the questions you want here or in Facebook. And and that's it be careful protect yourself and if you protect yourself you are protecting your staff and your patients bye bye